Okay, in this video we're going to look at the skeleton of the thoracic limb of the ruminant. Okay, so we're looking at a goat right here. We have the scapula, the humerus, the fused radius and ulna. Down here the manus consisting of the carpus, the metacarpus, and the digits. So if we look at the scapula, here I've got one from an ox. Okay. You see here, just like the horse, there would be a scapular cartilage attaching here. We've got the spine of the scapula, a nice prominent acromium. Okay. Here's the supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa. Down here, and a very prominent, once again, supraglenoid tubercle with the coracoid process for which the coracobrachialis muscle attaches. So on the supra, it's above the glenoid cavity, the supraglenoid tubercle is where the biceps brachii attaches. And then it's going to pass down through the intertubercular groove to come on down. On the medial side of the scapula, we have this roughened area where the stratus ventralis attaches, that's the serrated surface. We have the subscapular fossa where the subscapularis attaches. We come on down now to the humerus. We see just like in the horse there's both a cranial and a caudal part of our greater tubercle. Our lesser tubercle here with a cranial and a caudal part and our intertubercular groove through which the tendon of the biceps brachii passes. Okay. We also have a very prominent surface right here on which the infraspinatus muscle comes down and attaches. Okay. Here's the deltoid tuberosity onto which the deltoideus muscle attaches. We have our brachialis groove we have a very prominent lateral epicondyle, then on this side the medial epicondyle. So our condyle consists of the trochlea and the capitula. And here when we flex the elbow, the radius comes up into the radial fossa. And then if we extend, the olecranon comes up into the olecranon fossa. Okay, so this is the olecranon. Just like in other species, we have a prominent olecranon tuber through which the triceps brachii muscle attaches. We have our anconius here. Then we have fusion of that radius and ulna, not so much as we had in the horse, but we still see that fusion here. There's the foramen through which the common inner osseous artery passes through. And so distally here are lateral styloid process is actually going to be part of our ulna, whereas our medial styloid process is just the radius. Okay. So looking on this specimen here, we can see laterally we have the accessory carpal bone, then we have the ulnar carpal bone, the intermediate carpal bone, and the radial carpal bone. Remember the radial is always the more medial one because as we rotate distally to be more pronated in these quadrupeds that radius comes more medially. Okay. Concerning the distal row of carpal bones we have a fused second and third and a fourth and this here is not a carpal bone, but is a remnant of the fifth metacarpal. So our metacarpals are the fused third and fourth. So we have a fused second and third carpal bone and fused third and fourth metacarpal bones. We can see distally here that we have two articular, separate articular heads for our digits. Okay, and we have, we can see here, a vascular groove 
through which a vessel runs. Okay, that's going to be primarily the dorsal metacarpal artery 3. We have perforating branches going through those communicating holes. We have the interdigital incisure here. So we have our third and our fourth digit. Okay, so when you identify anything on the digits, you need to indicate whether it's on the third or the fourth digit. So we've got the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx. We have proximal sesamoids, a pair for each of the digits. So we would call this the axial and the abaxial sesamoid of digit four, the axial and abaxial sesamoid of digit three. Then we have our distal sesamoid bones here. Okay. And here's the flexor tubercle onto which the deep digital flexor tendon comes down to attach. And if we come back around here to the dorsal surface on these distal phalanges, we can see here the extensor processes upon which the common digital extensor comes down to attach. Okay, so that completes the skeleton of the thoracic limb of the ruminant.